<laughs> Everybody hear me? I'm talking like this. That's one. Yeah. All right, here we go. Probably gonna make some mistakes. It's chicken scratch, but hello everyone. Good evening. My name is Greg Gittison. I'm here tonight to honor my friend and his new wife. Say a few words the best I can. The last few weeks, I've been thinking about this speech. It's actually been stressing me out a bit. Finish this one. Like I said. Uh, trying to think about what to say about a guy like Max Morell. Started to think back as far as I could in my memory of Max. What was the first one? The first one I remember is watching him move across the field at Hyde Park School in Ontario, Ontario. And looking at him and thinking, he looks like a little shit. I don't know. It was the 80s. Boys would still do these things. It was, I imagine, so fun. We eventually did mix it up, but this is the place to say who won our boss. We don't want to be going on the way, right? <laughs> to put a pen to paper and describe for me this hard who he was. He, he is now who he was then. Pure energy, no fear, full speed, and first to go. He was an easy fit with us, right away. To describe our hangouts as kids, it was magic. We would play in the street fort, run around, nice and dangerous to each other. We'd play in the street fort, fort. he'd go up the rope, and I'd go the safer way, the slightly safer way, up the uh, little pieces of wood that were nailed on the side. We would ride bikes, a mask would have to add speed, and a jump every time. My mother told me this week that her first memory of Max was flying down Hamilton Avenue, full speed, way too fast for a kid his age. Crashing, going over the handlebars, and coming up ready. That was Max. <laughs> but as she described it, she let out this laugh and this smile. Take that how you want. But she liked Max a lot. That twist my mother had, I inherited. Because my first memory of laughing at Max's miseries, and there were many of them, was a day walking home from school and watching Max worrying and planning his survival, blooming, marching ever forward towards home. As you can imagine, Max was a handful. And as I remember, he probably turned to our mom after, not right now. <laughs> he had a booklet that had to be filled out by his teachers for his behavior in his study house. <laughs> the teacher would fill out a blog book about his antics, and he would have to take it to his parents and have it signed as received and read. <laughs> and return the next day to the teacher. This day as Max was going through all the stages of grief, anger, denial, bargaining, and eventually acceptance. As we arrived at this house, quietly at that age, I found a sick enjoyment of watching him squirm. <laughs> and I still do, right? I push his after Max and I became friends, to me he was my only friend. We would stay at each other's houses back and forth and have fun at both. My house had the woods to play around, drink pop, burp as loud as you could, as long as you could. We used to climb. We would race on the driveway with bikes, go cars, do that jumps, all the good stuff. But it was his house that intrigued me and gave me some cool memories and even some last plays to the city of my own side. <clears throat> Max's house was cool architecturally and historically inside the home. Between the street floor that brought us joy to the basement where I, I'm pretty sure I saw my first set of female breasts. <laughs> On TV. <laughs> I love them ever since. First was Max's family. It was James, Max's dad. To me, he was a towering figure. <laughs> but he was a big guy, a helicopter pilot, English British, so that accent is kind of scary and completely certain. That kind of hate, but to me, he was an impressive guy. Paula, the massive mom, was, very kind, was always very kind to me. And as I remember her, the way I remember, the thing I remember Paula most was when Max and I would be in the house. She would make us have conversations in French, just for a little bit, just to keep the language, not just in the school, but outside, and help us improve. Um, it's something I knew my own self of his English now, because his first language is French, so things have come full circle. 
Um, excuse me, lost chicken scratch from tears of blood. Um, <laughs> then there was Sam, cute and nice. <laughs> and she would bring her cute nice friends over. The slower you're hanging out with the No, but she was seriously with Sam's and was a normal life side of Max. A good team then and now. It's kind of funny while I was writing this, my son uh, text messaged me at the same time, I don't know about that. So it's, it's nice, you know, the way things are turned out. But Max wasn't, and just isn't funny and crazy, he's also a gentleman, well thought and brave. He's a fierce defender of his family, what he believes is right, and his friends. Since then and until now, with the space between and far away, no contact of years, I never doubted I have my best friend somewhere still. We finally reconnected through Tamsin, and I was overjoyed, except for when he told me his height. Pissed me off, he told me. <laughs> but Max always has an imaginary interest to himself. In any story. Everywhere it's in the <laughs> Max was the first time I had to say goodbye to you. It was a profound moment for me, and very sad. Max was also there for me when my sister passed away. But I think this is Max. For most people that know you, when you need Max, you get Max. Onions. Katie, I just met you, but that's fine. If the third best looking guy in front of Ray after me and then his dad, I'll show you. Me. You must be close to perfect. But it's just all here. She's too bad. I'm so far business. <laughs> Finally, saw Max is a great example of what I would like to see my own son develop into. He's a man in a world lacking. Max always dreamed of being in the Navy, but wasn't smart enough to. And had to go in the Army. It was Drew. Drew, where are you? Drew. 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 Thank you, Max, for always being my friend. And take care of me.